Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. and welcome back to The Money Factor here on The Sphere. This is LaShonda Johnson, certified financial educator and also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance. And good morning, it's Tony Sanders, also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance and your certified financial education instructor. We have an incredible show lined up for you today. So glad you can join us. And we have a special guest in studio today. Absolutely. First of all, we want to say we do apologize for being delayed. Um, but we could not not have this show today. This Absolutely. is this is <laughs> going to be incredible. I'm so excited to be able to introduce our guest hostess today. And so we've we've been telling you that we were going to have someone here that's going to be able to uh, that's qualified to be able to talk to you guys about the tax laws. And man, we couldn't have a better person to be able to do that because Absolutely. she happens to be a tax attorney. So uh, yeah, share the show today. <laughs> like and share, like and share. <laughs> okay, so I want to introduce to you guys Miss Rosa Weaver. And she's a tax attorney. So welcome, Rosa. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, ladies, yes. for having me. Thank Absolutely. you. We're so excited to have you here today. So um, please give everybody a little bit about your background, what you do. And uh, man, I, I, I I, first of all, you are a wealth of knowledge. When when I met with her a couple of weeks ago, I was like, we were like 10 minutes in our conversation. I was like, no, 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 no. You got to be on the show. We got to have you on the show. So please let everybody know who you are, what you do, all Absolutely. that good stuff. Well, thank you again. And thank you for having me. Um, so I am actually a licensed tax attorney. Um, my practice is 80% tax and I divide the last 20 into business services and uh, estate planning. So I'm very, 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 very well versed as to the changes that are going on. Um, and let me start out by saying for this particular podcast, because we have so much change, we're really only gonna focus on individual. Good, okay. good. Okay. Um, and the reason why we're gonna focus on individual is because um, we really wanna hit what's impacting you now. Because there is a lot of um, misnomers out there that, oh, you know, well, I have another year. Well, you actually don't. Um, the new tax bill is actually effective 2018, and actually it expires 2025. Wow, So okay. it's actually temporary. Wow. Can I Can I stop you right there? A few key words that she has said is that, um, again, that we are affected now. And I know a lot of people think, oh, I have until yet next year. Right, right. And so, and then it expires 2025. So as our administration changes, then things could change. So continue, Rosa, would yes, you? Yes, and I think that's very important. So um, we do have some things that will roll out in 2019, but to be quite honest, that's more on the business side. So okay. what I wanna talk about today is where we were and where we are now okay so that you can plan your year and know what's going on and how this impacts you okay so um, just so we're all on the same um, playing field I'm gonna give you a really small history lesson um, the US hasn't seen a tax oversight um, like this since 1984 wow. um, and that was doing probably what the Reagan administration um, <clears throat> and that was a huge overhaul and for years um, 
tax reform in the United States has been something of a major concern no matter who you have in office. Um, and one of the reasons why is because the U.S. is actually not competitive um, on the business side of things. And the reason why is the U.S. Is, has what's known as a worldwide taxation system. In a worldwide tax system, um, if you are a U.S. citizen or if you are a U.S. owned business, you are taxed on all of your income no matter where you are in the world. You always have to file a U.S. tax return, even if you are an expat, and we'll get into that later. Mm. So when you see a lot of these news articles on, oh, you know, Google has offshored, you know, X amount of millions or billions of dollars, it's because what they've done is they've created sophisticated tax transactions to headquarter IP to different countries like Ireland and so forth to keep that money offshore because if it's, um, if that company is categorized as a U.S. company, then they're going to be subject to what was 35% corporate tax. Mm. So and that, with that premise, that kind of applied to individuals. No matter where I am, I'm Jane Doe, and I live in Tanzania, let's just say. Because I have not renounced my U.S. citizenship, I am still subject to U.S. taxes. Now, there are exceptions and exclusions and all that kind of fancy stuff, and we'll get into that a little bit to the ends of the show. So where are we now? Mm -hmm. And where were we before? Uh, well, before we had a very complicated system. Um, you had what was known as standard deductions, and I think you, everyone is probably safe to say many people have probably heard that standard deductions um, have increased. And what that means is in the prior system you had a standard deduction, let's just say if you're married filing jointly, mm -hmm. of about 13000 and you also probably had several itemized deductions. And under the old system, which is not too far, too different from the new system, if your itemized deductions um, exceeded your standard deduction, then you got the greater of the two. Okay? Mm, okay. But not both. Not both. You never got both. And so the issue is, is under the old system, um, the itemized deductions created a lot of paperwork. Okay. And there are a lot of floor minimums. And a lot of things got phased out for something known as AMT, which is a whole actually parallel tax system to our current tax system. So all of these things were happening, and um, we needed to simplify it. So this new tax bill really has not eliminated, I'd like to say temporarily suspended those itemized deductions. Okay. So now what's really important. So can I ask you a quick question? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've, you've stated that uh, it was a lot of paperwork and things. So what benefit, uh, I mean, there's an obvious benefit for more revenue, but what, what, other would, what else would be the benefit to take away itemized deductions? That's a great question. Um, any, I mean, just think of it this way. If you have a lot of paperwork, you have a lot of costs because you have a lot of administrative work, right. and it's very confusing. So from my, from, in my opinion, that's the only advantage because this tax bill actually um, is adding a trillion dollars to our deficit. Are you kidding? Wow. Trillion dollars. We actually have no way to pay for this. Um, between the business and between the individual reductions, there's no way to pay for it. Okay, so that that's another issue, is that the understanding or on the general the general understanding from the general public is that this tax bill is creating a a revenue stream, and you're saying it's actually creating a deficit. If you look at the tax bill, the tax bill is taking away a lot of revenue. Right. And I'm going to jump around a little here a little bit. I'm gonna give you a really easy example. Um, estate planning. The estate tax exemption was five and a half million dollars. Well, guess what? Now it's double. It's 11. If you're married, that's 22. So now $22 million is exempt from your estate for, for tax purposes. So wow. you're getting that money free. So where's that money going? Where's that money going? Exactly. Where's that's, that money that's, going? That's, that's a and good so question. And so how I always like to say it is, you know, in any household, we, you know, we deal with plus and minuses. Mm -hmm. In some years, we can afford things. You know, in some years, we cannot. We can't. You know, I may want this fancy new car, but guess what? It's not in my budget. It's not budget. in the budget. And this tax bill is not in our budget. Wow. And that's just, you know, that's just being that's very just, honest. Wow. So. Okay. And that's a simple way to, you know, really look at it is like, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. So if we can't afford it, then that means somewhere down the line, we are going to pay We're for gonna it. We're going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it, obviously. 
Um, and I think that's also the reason why the tax bill is temporary. It's, it expires in 2025. So, you know, the next administration is going to have to address how are we going to pay for these tax cuts? Where are we going to increase? Where are we going to build this revenue? How are we going to wow. bring money back to the U.S.? Is it going to be in the form of jobs? That's what it says. Oh, well, if we increase jobs, then we will increase our revenue, and then that will eat away. Well, if you Things look at the job really growth. out like that. Right. They and if you look at the job out. growth rate compared to the tax uh, uh the tax savings that we are giving, it does not meet. Right. And, and, and you, you know, that's just honestly plus and minuses. Wow. So, but let's get into how this affects us now. Absolutely. Yes. Let's get and I think um, the best way to kind of tackle this is let's just give, we're going to use the standard simple example, and we'll use a family, let's just say that for simplicity purposes, that makes 100 grand a year. Okay. Married filing jointly, mm -hmm. 100 okay. grand a year. Okay. Under the old tax system, that married filing jointly couple got a $13,000 standard deduction. Right. Okay. And they also got what's known as personal exemptions. Yes. And you got about $4,000 per spouse, dependent, and child. Okay. Um, and then if those things were greater than your itemized deductions, you got the greater of the two. And so so we're, we're looking at now on those two things, $17,000. Okay. Okay. We're with you. Right. Okay. So now that's, that's one way to look at it. So then now let's say throughout the year, you have you have kept up with your charitable, contrib charitable contributions. Yes. You've kept up with um, your medical expenses and all these other things. Well, I like that you say kept up mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you guys, you, you know, you've got to keep the right records. So when it comes time to see someone, absolutely, like Rosa, then you've kept up with your stuff, <laughs> and you don't expect your CPA or your tax attorney or whomever to you know now just ad lib on your tax return right. so i'm just saying continue <laughs> <laughs> then you're really coming to see me right <laughs> <laughs> then you're coming rosa <laughs> and i and don't worry you're in good hands we can fix everything so um that's how it was before now um we're basically saying okay let's take that hundred thousand dollars income and we're going to automatically knock off 24k Okay, so all of those things that you kept up with, your charitable contributions and all of those things, um, you really don't have to anymore. Because it's already going to be deducted. Automatically. You just get it. Automatically. Wow, that's cool. So speaking of just get it, we're at the point of the show that I have to talk about our first sponsor, and that's Elite Dental Wellness. Got to keep your grill clean. <laughs> <laughs> so this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We're committed to the finest possible oral care and overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity expertise and service through our commitment to modern dentistry continued education and friendly atmosphere we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family dentistry can be scary daunting and uncomfortable dr Bertice and her team work tirelessly to make sure that you are comfortable make your appointment today with dr ashandra Batiste at elite dental wellness by calling 713-789-8680 <laughs> I know, right? Okay, well, wow. so yes, you got you gotta you gotta make sure that everything is good with your teeth, and good especially with these, good it's with good tax. with these taxes too. <laughs> so okay, continue, Rosa. Man, this is powerful information, Absolutely. you guys. I hope you guys are Listen, liking and I sharing hope you this show. Are liking and sharing wow. this show because, I mean, you would pay a good dollar amount to get the information you're getting here today. So now let's revisit that example. So we've reduced our income. Right from mm -hmm. 100 to mm -hmm. what 76,000. So, Correct. throughout the tax year, you were taxed at 100 grand, you okay. should have been taxed at 76. So, now we're going to see some actual savings. Okay, okay? Mm -hmm. so now with that being said, what else has changed is really, really important. And you actually should have start to, started to see this now is if you are a W 2 employee. Ooh, what? Um, the progressive tax rates have changed. Okay, so before we were 10, 15, probably what 25, 30. 37 39.6 correct we used to be 39.6 so 40 percent of your wages went to taxes absolutely That's a lot wow of money. that is a lot yes. of money yes um so now what we've done is okay this administration that says all right instead of paying the highest which was 39.6 the highest tax bracket you're only going to pay 37 percent correct okay after that you are going to be um 
33%. And it, it basically decreases 2 to 4% every tax bracket. So W-2 employees, if you're a salaried employee, you should be seeing you more money see in your paycheck you're right now. You're going to see even towards the end of the year because we're a progressive stru tax structure. So you're taxed based upon how much you make. It's not a flat tax. Correct. So if you only, so if you made ten thousand dollars this quarter and let's just say forty thousand dollars at the end, you're going to be taxed based upon your income in that bracket. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's uh, a good clarification. That is, and that's a really common mistake. I mean. Honestly, you really do have to be a licensed professional to really realize Absolutely. that you're taxed along the way. So you will see a little bit of savings now. Okay. Now, the other big thing I want to talk about that's changed and that will impact all of us is the mortgage deduction. Mm. Okay. Now, that's that's a biggie. And before we get into that, I want to say that I need you guys right now, this second, this moment, to go to uh, the sphere and subscribe. Okay. You know, we only get 15 minutes live on Facebook but the show is not ending, okay? To watch the show in its entirety, you need to be a subscriber. While you're there, we would like for you to write a review. Tell us what you think, what you like, what you'd like to see. Constructive criticism is welcome, and also compliments. We'd also like for you to share the show. We don't know who you know, so we need you to share the show. This is very valuable information, and that's what we do here on The Money Factor, but we need to reach the people you know that we don't know. So please share the show. And while you're there, you know, we do provide this show completely complimentary. So there is an opportunity for you to give to us, to give back to you. You can do that through a one-time donation. Uh, there's a button there for that. You can uh, also be a regular patron who donates. There's also an opportunity there for that as well. So we would love for you to do both uh, or one or the other, but do something, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so please go like the show and share it. Subscribe. Uh, and make sure that you donate if you can and write a review. Okay? Do so something. Do something. Okay. The show I is like going that. to continue. Um, and, and getting back to this mortgage thing. Right. Now, you know, as a consumer, that is about the biggest deduction that we take is for the our mortgage. mortgage interest. But let's think about this. Please tell us what we need to think about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we just got an increased standard deduction. So why did you need your mortgage interest deduction? so that you can get the greater of itemized or versus standard. So let's say you're paying $12,000 a year and you have um, other deductions that you've taken under the old system, home, owning a home really, really, really mattered because you wanted the tax benefit. Exactly. Right? Now does that mean home ownership is done, does gonna decrease? You know, I'm not, no economist, so I, you know, I can't speak to that. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, what it just means is that this is where we are now. Okay. Okay. So before you before you get any deeper in this, I want to say that um, Rosa does practice. You guys. Okay. She does have a location, mm -hmm. and you can reach her. So you've shared uh, so much already in the already. first fifteen mm -hmm. minutes of this show. Please tell people how they can reach you because we know that this show is an hour, and 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 sometimes you do need, and most times I'm not going to say some sometimes. Most times, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, you need to sit down with a professional like Rosa to be able to see how these things apply to you personally. These things are given in a general concept, but when it comes to your personal taxes and your personal situation, they need to see you. Absolutely. Okay, so please tell them how they can reach Absolutely. out Absolutely. So um, we are actually located in downtown Houston in the Smith Center. Um, the easiest way to reach us is to call our office. Our office number is one eight five five four eight four seven tax. Very simple. Mm -hmm. So one eight five five four eight four seven tax. Um, if you really want some readily available information, you can visit our website. Um, it's forty two eighty three legaladvisors dot com. Um, and just also, you know, this show is really focusing on tax planning. So if you're watching us, uh, it's on the screen. Okay, if you're listening to us, then you need to go back and watch us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's giving it verbally to you. Um, and we focus on tax planning, tax litigation, and tax resolution. So our philosophy is to be there from the beginning to the end. Absolutely. Okay, we okay, understand so how personal this is. What I'd like to do for you to do is kind of break down those three categories. So tax planning what's encompassed in that and also the the litigation and also the the other area that you spoke about um tax planning is basically what we're doing now mm -hmm. you know clients are coming to me small business owners and individuals they come to our firm and they are looking way looking for ways to 
maximize their tax credits and tax deduction mm. and minimize their exposure mm-hmm. as far as tax liability. Um, and there are a lot of creative solutions to do that. So that's what a tax planning session would involve. Um, on the small business side, depending on the entity that you have chosen, we will, we will be able to give you direction there as well. So you can build a profitable amount for you and your family. And awesome. Your business. Mm-hmm. And we're all Wonderful. about uh, we're all yes. about that tax free. So hey, tax free retirement things of that nature, man. So they definitely need to call you and come see you because I'm just thinking in my head, man, I could use this, mm-hmm. this, you know, mm-hmm. so many things that people, especially small businesses, they don't have the information and they need to see, seek somebody professional. You know, we're always saying, you know, don't don't look to social media for your help. Get with a professional. Get with a professional. You have to yes. get with a professional. It's like a doctor tells you, please don't diagnose yourself with right. an MD. Please come and see me. So, you know, here at the Houston Housewives of Finance, official, okay, uh, our goal is to be able to bring you the resources that you need to be able to get the help that you need to to make sure that you're doing things properly, correct, you know, in the proper order, okay? And so, uh, of course, we're bringing you professionals here on The Money Factor. Uh, This is a resource that we're providing for you to be able to make sure that you get these things done in the manner that in, in, in which they should, so... Okay. Okay. And tax litigation and tax resolution are essentially um, the very synonymous. Tax litigation is when you're actually going to court, whether it be a state taxing authority or it is um, a federal taxing authority like U.S. tax court. Mm-hmm. Um, you definitely want a tax attorney. Um, something that you probably see a lot of commercials about, um, you know, is tax debt resolution. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in situations that we can't get ourselves out of. Yes, Absolutely. and I see those commercials. See and those I don't mean to interrupt you, but we see those in, those commercials that say, you know, um, do you owe the IRS seventeen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars? Call us and we'll get that down to zero or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So. We could do a whole program on that. (laughs) We'll have to save that topic for later because there is, here's what I always tell people, and this will call the office, schedule your free consultation, Mm -hmm. okay? It's worth it. You're you're getting, you know, free legal services, free legal advice for 45 minutes. At that time, we dissect your financial situation um, because there are a million and one ways to address tax debt. Wow. Um, What I will always encourage people, whether it's with my firm or another firm is to make sure you have a licensed tax professional, a licensed tax attorney, not just, um, oh, well, you know, I I listened to this commercial and they said, Mm. if I have this, because you're probably not getting a licensed tax professional that knows the Internal Revenue Manual, that knows the Internal Revenue Code, that that knows the arguments, that knows the strategic, you know, we're, I'm, some of my clients, you know, depending on what your goal is, and that's the first thing we do in our first session. What are your goals? Are we going to prolong this and look at this later? You know, what is your financial situation now? There are a lot of ways to address tax resolution. So, so like I said, we could have a whole session on that alone. And then one, one thing that I heard you say that it's free. So please reach out to her. A free consultation. You all need this because you stop making decisions on your own that you're not familiar with, yes. you don't know about. And, hey, I love that, that they can just sit down, get the information, and then go forward from there. Because you're watching social media, watching commercials, and not giving you – you're not reading that fine print for one thing, I can tell you that. Oh, no, you're, you're not. And you're getting pressured <laughs> by a salesperson. Mm. That's the difference. That's wow. a no. That would be a no. And and you don't want to play games with the IRS. You sure don't. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not the that's the not uncle you want to play with. No, no, no. Mm. That's the that's the uncle you respect. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So let's get back to this mortgage deduction. Okay. I really so before we it. go that far, we're gonna go to our next sponsor, which is sponsored by the Sphere. This portion of the show is being sponsored. Are you starting a business or looking for a place to advertise? Do you need a re- reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product. If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach without the United States and all the modern countries across the globe. Our enriched 
content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad surely to hit the mark each and every time call us today at 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv again i love the sphere we love the sphere here uh for all your advertising needs for all your podcast shows you definitely want to join our family absolutely but We're wow big things big things mm -hmm. right here at the sphere and you need to be a part of it especially if you're business owner you have a product that you want to make sure that everybody understands and knows about or if you have a message something that you need to say then you make make sure that you contact the sphere so now back to you rosa because this is oh my really gosh, this good is, this is like i'm juicy. thinking over here i'm like Ooh. <laughs> we need We're a like, cup of coffee right yes i'm like hey um okay mortgage. i'm having my consultation right now. <laughs> mortgage okay so before you're, you um you could obviously deduct your mortgage interest. Everybody Correct. knows that. That's mm -hmm. you know not rocket science. But the value up to the home was up to a million. Mm -hmm. um, wow. and you could also deduct. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's up mm -hmm. to a million. Mm -hmm. That's pretty big. And you could also deduct the interest on your second home as well. So under the new uh, tax law, you cannot deduct the value of your home up to um, a million. It's actually seven fifty, seven hundred and fifty thousand. Mm. Okay. Mm. But what does that mean? You bought a home that was nine hundred thousand dollars. Let's just say, mm -hmm. Cassandra, and you're like, okay, well, does this mean in two thousand and eighteen I'm not going to be able to deduct this for mortgage interest anymore? That's no. You're actually grandfathered in if you purchase your home prior to two thousand and eighteen. Wow. wow. So that's so, a really, really yes, big that's, thing. A, that's big a big deal. deal, and people don't know that. See. I'm so this is only for those who pur purchase the home Don't afterwards. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you purchase your home prior to December 31st, 2017, released January 1, 2018, and the value of the home was over 750, so that's 750 to 1 million dollar mark, you can still write off that interest. Okay, so okay? this is that's for awesome. new homeowners after January 2018 that this applies to. Absolutely. Now, how would you how would, how would, how would you guys know that <laughs> if you were not listening to the money factor and talking to Rosa? Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is so that's good. a really, really big one. The other thing is, um, and this affects a lot of us, especially people who purchase homes um, anywhere in like the 2005 to 2010 era, um, home equity interest is no longer deductible. Wh wait a minute, now, wait, wait. Reverse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Home, money, home equity interest is no longer deductible. You're still if you pri if you bought prior to, you're in good hands. If you buy as what's a what's the home, time frame again? If you if you beginning 2018, if you purchase a new home and you have a home that has a home equity loan, you will not be able to deduct that interest. If you refinance your home. Wow. And you want to take a loan against your equity. That's a home equity loan. Absolutely. That is. And we were deducting that interest. You want that new kitchen or, you know, I'm not going anywhere. You want to pay for the kids' college. And some people put Pull that out. debt yes. into their home. Yes. And they used to be able to write it off. Now they can no longer write it off. Exactly. Wow. And that's until 2025. That's until 2025, starting this year until 2025. So if you're looking to refinance your own, mm. this is really important. These are yes, things you is. need to be meeting with a financial oh, wow. advisor Absolutely. and a tax attorney in partnership and in, in trying to figure out how can you pay for some of your bigger um, ticket items. Okay, so let me back her up right there. Eep, that's because why. <laughs> you need to meet with Tony or not, uh, and I, and you need to meet with Rosa, right. okay? So we got you covered on this the This is a team made in heaven this, right hey, here. Yes, right, right wow. here. Okay, so that's what you need to do. So continue. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of home and um, home mortgages, we also need to talk about property taxes. Okay. And I really want to talk about this uh -oh. because- okay. Property tax is one of two things. The state of Texas, you don't pay a state income tax. Right. Which is great. Mm -hmm. But you pay property taxes. Yes, yes we, we do. And those property taxes were sitting on your federal tax return yes. being deducted. Yes. Please don't tell me that they're going to be taken off. They're going to be limited to $10,000. Whoa. So if you own multiple properties... Maximum is ten thousand dollars. No right. matter For what. How many properties you have? Maximum is ten thousand dollars per return. Oh you wow! One person. Can, wow. So is it a joint? So can joint. I get ten thousand and my that spouse great, get two thousand? You know what? That is a great question. That is joint. That's married filing jointly. Ten thousand dollars is the maximum. Wow! So, so if you file married filing single, that's that's going to be five thousand. And the. And the uh, mm hmm. So you know what I'm thinking too. What about all these investors who buy these homes and they have all these properties? It's still just 
ten thousand? Well, it depends. Are they buying them as individuals or businesses? And because it's different for businesses. And the rules, right? The rules are completely different for businesses. And we're talking about individuals today, so you're gonna have to come mm. back for a different show for businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely so. that's a great conversation. But at, but that is we have to talk about what is the best structure if I'm a real estate investor, and that was putting everything as a sole proprietor on my social security. That's when they need to see. Rosa, absolutely, okay. and and uh, so let's let's take a break real quick and, and just say where you can reach all of us. So definitely, um, when it comes to your personal finances, you can reach out to me, Lashonda J at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance dot com, and you can reach me, Tony S at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance dot com. We're also on all your social media platforms, including Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on LinkedIn and Meetup. We're on Facebook, of course, as the Houston Housewives of Finance official. official. <laughs> if it doesn't say official, it's, it's not, not us. us. And you can also text. <laughs> <laughs> I love you can it. text I love us. <laughs> you can text us at 31996. Pick up your phones, shoot us a text. Yes. We'll have your information in the message field. Please type in ask A S K H H O F all one word and we'll be able to get to you there. Now, how do you reach yourself? And I know you on all everything I too. I am on everything too. <laughs> That's just the way of the world now. Yes. Absolutely. Um, yes. You can follow me on Instagram at Rosa Weaver Esquire. Um, I'm also on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn and I'm also on Facebook at 4283 Legal Advisors. Love awesome. it. Love it. Because awesome. this is some great information. Yes. We we love you. Did oh, we man. mention that? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need to do this. Yes. I need to do that. yes okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about our medical expenses. Mm. Okay. The number one reason people go bankrupt. Isn't it? You know, that's a whole nother conversation. Oh, my goodness. Now, oh, my gosh. Please don't tell me they're yanking stuff from us on that, too. We got good news on medical expenses. Okay. okay. So, the floor, the way the U.S. does medical expenses is your adjusted gross income. Mm -hmm. So, after you take your standard deductions, um, that's considered your AGI, you have to have a floor in order to deduct certain expenses. Okay. Um, for miscellaneous expenses, it used to be, for certain things, it used to be 2%. For healthcare, it used to be two, 10%. So if you made, um, what, $10,000 that year, 10% um, of that is 1,000. So any medical expense over $1,000, you can use as a Schedule A itemized deduction. Now, it's actually been reduced to 7.5. So the threshold from, has been lowered. From, from, it went from, from 10, 10 to 7.5. 7. Okay. So okay. now I only need to make, let's say, you know, another simple example. I made $10,000 that year. Now anything, any medical expenses I have over $750 can be um, used as an itemized deduction. So that's something that's really so going to help good. us. So that's good, right, that, because that, cause we already know the cost of uh, medical, so it, you're going to spend it. It rises. It's rising. Right. So. And that, was, that leads me to my point, and I really believe – um, they did that because the cost of medical expenses Absolutely. Yes. has skyrocketed. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that's also going to be an advantage. And remember, the tax code gives and takes. Okay. So there's always going to be winners and there's always going to be losers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need to take care, take advantage of what you have while you have it. Prime example, educational expenses, if they were employer-related required, used to be able to use that as an above-the-line deduction. So if I pay five grand to go to school and – Houston Housewives of Finance required me to go to school, then I could use that as a deduction. Mm -hmm. That's no longer available. Wow. So now if I if you require it, now I'm out of pocket of five thousand dollars. And no deduction. And, and no, no deduction. deduction. So what's the give? You took something that was a what's take. the give? That was take. That Is was there a take. give anywhere? You got seven point five percent in medical expenses. What if I don't get sick? The give and take. There's always winners and losers. So, 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 so look, listen to Every what she said. Every day is not a holiday. Wow. Is what I call listen, but listen people. to what yes. she said. She said there's winners and losers. So you have to ask yourself, are you winning, winning or, or are you losing? losing? Yes. And this, I mean, and plan. You know you have this from 2018 mm. to 2025. So let's talk about it. Let's plan. And I, I think what's really great mm. is the education part because you can't do something about something you don't know. Mm. Okay. And so um, we were just even having a conversation earlier that we want to have more Absolutely. of Rosa uh, to be able to help us to help you, okay, uh, through educational forms, workshops, whatever the case may be. So do stay tuned because we're gonna we're really gonna align with her to get you know get the word out and to be a resource to you, our followers, okay. So uh, let's go on to what's next. Let's talk about kitty tax. Okay. That's mm. something that doesn't get talked about too often, kitty tax. So kitty tax basically is a rule that if your child makes above $2,100, 
um, you have to report that income, and that income ends up on mom and dad's tax return. Yeah, I learned oh, that the no, hard okay, way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Okay. I was like, I got to do what? Oh, yes. 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 Now, I learned about that one, too, because, you know, y- your kids like to go work mm-hmm. in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking that, well, that's on you. Mm-hmm. No, that's not on you. That's, that's, on, that's you. on you that's as right. a parent. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so please continue. So I had to amend my tax. <laughs> <Yes. and Robert laughs> <back. laughs> I, I said, know what? no one likes to talk about the yes. kitty tax. I always feel bad about the kitty tax, but it's my duty yes. to tell okay. everybody do about because you know you want to make sure you do it right. You don't want them barking at the door at the no, end. No, because yes. you, and especially when you don't know, right? So, so the kitty tax under the old rule, and this has been around forever. You know, your son or daughter works a summer job. They make you know four or five thousand dollars a year. Now that income has contributed to your household, mm-hmm. now, and you ain't see a dime. They, <laughs> they didn't spend <laughs> it. On you know their designer clothes, yes. and whatever taking their friends out, out, movies. Okay, okay, but, okay, but it's mm. yeah. So now, <laughs> what made it even worse was it was taxed at mom and dad's tax rate, which is not fair. Is I don't not. like that. Okay, because that's, I mean, you now kids stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to work because you you now pushed me into a new tax bracket that I don't I didn't welcome. Absolutely. And and again, parents don't They're know. They're not aware. This. They're mm-hmm. not aware of it. Well, we got some relief under the new one. Okay, okay. Talk to me. Talk to me. So you still have to claim them. But okay. But unless they make more than you, and this can be for capital gains or if it was capital gains mm-hmm. income or ordinary income. They are considered single, so they'll be taxed at their own independent rate. Yay! But, but, but wait, you said if that they made like. what more than twenty one hundred? Oh yes. So you still report them on your taxes, but we don't eat it. You don't eat it. So okay, they get, so so mom and dad get taxed at twenty and they thirty. Can re- they can do their own tax. No, return. no, 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 no. It's still they still come under you as a dependent. Hmm. But now they're being taxed at their own single rate. Oh, so that amount. So how do how does that happen? Yeah, how does that happen? How do you slice separate that the out? two? Well, I mean, software programs do that for okay. us. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. You know, if you're doing your taxes by hand nowadays, that's great. I commend you. I don't have time, but software programs do that. But just know that, okay, if your child makes five or six grand this okay, year, okay, they're not going to be taxed like at your rate. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, we're not going to be taxed because that can put you over. People don't realize. Right. That. It does. It does. That's what I'm over. saying. It can put you over into AMT. Yes. Okay. All I know is I amended, I amended my taxes, and uh, what I thought I had, I didn't have, mm-hmm. and I was like, what? Mm-hmm. And again, two thousand dollars can make or break a you big, through a, a tax bracket. Mm-hmm. That's you know it could carry you over, and that's when it's not that's not cute because you didn't see any of the money as parents. Now that was a really good one, the the kitty yes, tax. That's a good one. Yeah, it's one that gets mm-hmm. overlooked, and then they mom and dad file their taxes every year, and they're like, "Why did I just get bumped into a new tax bracket? Right. My yes. child's in college." I'm like, "Well, they're still a dependent." But they work. Mm-hmm. They're working. So what's the cutoff for that? May I ask? The cutoff for kitty tag. When do you when did when do you not have to? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it depends on if they're college or not. And I believe, and don't quote me on this role because I can't remember if it's the age of twenty four or twenty six full time student. Um, so don't quote me on that. I know that information is listed on our website. Okay. Um, and then if they're not in school, it's age nineteen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. They, they got me. Well, this portion of the show is being sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowered movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at kogpassion.com that's kogpassion.com and use the code dope d-o-p-e exclamation point for 10 percent off exclusive unleash your dopeness apparel act now sizes are selling out fast and that's kog company you know what i love kog but hey rosa you dope today because <laughs> i know that i know this, this ta- information what? is fire wow it really is. because you know it's as hot as this jacket as she's it, wearing absolutely <laughs> red hot <laughs> because you know what you hear it on tv you see it on the news and you you see people posting things on social media but this is the for real no for sure you have yes. to know this information mm-hmm. um you have to get in contact with her please give out your contact information again um i will and i'm also going to give out a free resource too um, awesome i always believe in empowering taxpayers mm-hmm. okay 
Um, some sites that go overlooked is taxpolicycenter.org tax policy okay. and taxfoundation.org. Mm. So let's say you just kind of want to like fact check someone. Those are phenomenal resources. Can you repeat that? Taxpolicycenter.org mm-hmm. okay. and Tax Foundation Center, or Tax Foundation actually. Okay, so if you're watching us, we've got it on the screen there for you. Tax Foundation. And one of the things I like about Tax Foundation, this is actually my even go-to site. Awesome. You know, because sometimes I actually don't know everything, but I didn't say that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And Tax Foundation has um, a a calculator, income tax calculator estimator, and I love it. You know, just really quickly, hey, I think I'm making this or I did this, and you want to see how the new tax law affects you, go to that website. Absolutely. We definitely yes. have to put that on our page as a resource. It's a it great resource. Very good. And it's a bipartisan site, um, Tax Foundation and uh, Tax Policy Center. Great resource for everyone, including myself. I love awesome. that. And awesome. I love that it's bipartisan, so mm-hmm. you don't have to worry that it's shifting to towards Republicans right. or it's shifting towards Democrats. It's bipartisan. So uh, no matter which Republican Party, I mean, excuse me, which which party <laughs> you belong to, whether Republican or Democrat, Republican or Democrat, absolutely, this is a resource for you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and really quickly, again, if you have any questions, you guys can call us at one eight five five four eight four seven tax. Schedule your free legal consultation. It takes you approximately forty five minutes. And let's talk. Let's figure this out. Mm. Okay, so can we throw out something here real quick? I'm putting you on the spot. Okay. Okay. So if they mention that they saw you on this show, we of course, they get that free consultation. But can you give them a little something extra on, on your services if they mention they saw you here on the Spear and the Money Factor? Absolutely. Oh, okay. awesome. See, awesome. I'm looking out for you guys. See, I'm looking out for you guys. I'm looking out for you hey, guys. Hey, we're I always trying you, to spend less hey, and save more. I want you to get your life right. <laughs> okay? Absolutely. Just mention that um, you listen to our show up with Houston um, Housewives of Finance, and we definitely will be looking at a friends and family discount that we offer. Awesome. Oh, nice. Awesome. So, so we're, we're friends and family now. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, so. What's next? Um, let's talk about the Affordable Care Act. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. That is something okay. that we really need to understand. Okay, so, and then let's just do a quick little two-minute little history lesson. Okay. So we can all make sure we're on the same page, because I do see a lot of information that rolls out of here that is also very false. Okay. Okay, well, first of all, the Affordable Care Act did not go away. SCOTUS, okay. Supreme Court of the United States, said, no, this is a law that Congress can enact, all right? So it did not go away. Okay. That's why you have our current Congress fighting, because they know the only way to get rid of it is to repeal it. Mm. And that has not uh. happened, and that's a whole other conversation. Okay. okay. So where are we now? Okay. Under of the Affordable Care Act, you had to pay a penalty if you do not have health insurance. Correct. Yes. And it's 2% of your AGI. Okay. Mm-hmm. For every month that you do not have health care. And did that go up? That went away. That went away. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, yeah. That went away. And honestly, from my legal mind, it should have never been there because it's a penalty. And laws are not supposed to penalize people. They're supposed to discourage. Mm-hmm. We have to figure out another way to insure all our people. But not doing it with a penalty may not have been the best approach. So that that, did that's go like, away. That's now like that, putting a stronghold now, on people saying, do this you or must, else. You must, you must. Okay, so now that's for 2018 season, tax filing season, or 2017? When you file your 2018 taxes, it's going to be for this current filing season. So it will not be effective. Okay. So those people who are filing this year. They are not impacted. So you will be subject to the health care. It's called the share responsibility payment. Okay. Um, you still will be, if you do not have health care for a month, two months, or whatever, you still will be responsible for that 2% AGI penalty floor. Right. So I have a question because this is something that I've been really concerned about for our followers and others that since it's now not a mandate, um, I want to see people covered. I want to make sure that they're protected. And now that they know that they're not going to be penalized, what's going to happen with That's this? That's a great question. That is a great question. Um <sighs> Unfortunately, this administration did not dedicate resources to even tell people when open enrollment was. What? Um, and open enrollment, is an exceptional circumstance, um, you cannot get um, marketplace health care. Right. Um, so the IRS will not enforce that penalty is basically where we're at. 
Okay. But so what I always do is I always encourage people, you still have the option to sign up for Marketplace or government spon- um, sponsored health care. Um, even it is, it may not, you may not meet certain or may meet certain income thresholds where you just get a little bit of, you know, $100 here to help you pay that $500 premium right. every month or that mm-hmm. $700 mm-hmm. premium. Mm-hmm. So you may qualify for that. So, you know, visit healthcare.gov, you know, become familiar with the deadlines and dates. Um, no, you won't be penalized if you don't have it, but you're, you mean, essentially you're basically giving yourself a bill when you walk in an emergency room. Absolutely. And mm. you basically, I mean, that's not proper. That's not a proper way for no. health, wellness, no. or if you're financial, you're, no. you're putting your family at risk. No. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. you're right. Absolutely. And so, and, and, and on that note, that's where you need to contact us so we can help you make sure that you get your health coverage in line. So you can contact us at one 800 You can text us at 31996 in the message field. Type in ASK, A-S-K-H-H-O-F, all one word. You can reach me at LaShonda J at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. You can also reach us on all of our social media outlets. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook, of course, as the Houston Housewives of Finance official. And if it doesn't say official, it's not us. Sorry. I'm out here by myself. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here trying to talk to the producer. How much time do we have left? How much time do we have left? Because the information is so informative. It's so great. Yes. We want to make sure that we're, you know, giving you the information to the very last minute. So yes. I understand we have 10 minutes left. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so Tony, how did they reach you, though? Oh, you want to reach me. Absolutely. You got to reach me. Tony Sanders. T-O-N-I-S. Okay. You know how to reach me. You watch this every single week. <laughs> Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. What am I looking for? Yeah, that, she, they know, already know. We Tony S at the Houston Housewives of Finance I'm so into this tax thing because I'm is, like, this is good. wow, this is really good stuff. This is excellent stuff. So, so you I, guys, um, I what, know what, we what, what we got next? I know we don't have that much time, so we're gonna have to do a quick skinny on some of these topics. So I want to hit them so that you know to be aware of them and so that um, you know who to call. Mm-hmm. Um, let's really talk about alimony. Mm. Oh. Okay. So, um, beginning January 1st, 2019, um, you are no longer to deduct alimony if you are the payer, and it will not be income to the payee. Okay. So, oh, so wait, 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 wait. wait reverse. Wait. Okay. Let's now, say it again. Beginning January 1st, 2019, so next year, mm-hmm. um, you will no longer be able to deduct alimony payments as the payer. So, if I'm paying alimony, my husband's you know, I'm giving him money alum in the form of alimony. I get to deduct that as income, and he has to claim it as income. Right. Not anymore. Not anymore. Wow, oh, wow Mary J. Blige. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but I that's will what came say, to mind. Wow. Yeah, but I will say Ooh. it is it's a grandfathered law. So if you were divorced, if you get divorced prior to January 1st, 2019, you'll be grandfathered into the old So law. she's grandfathering. So she, she, she's, she's grandfathered okay, in. So, okay, so big ups back to you okay <laughs> but you brought up a great point because people are yes. like oh my god this is, means everything no 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 so if you if it was in your divorce degree prior to then, then you're good you're good going okay. for it if you get married if you get it. divorced so after yeah. 2019 so you need to be strategic you know push your attorney to make sure you're <laughs> right divorce it's finalized so, i mean yeah for january wow. 2019 yeah yes so oh. we're probably going to see an increase in family law issues. Absolutely. Yeah, wow. but I, I have to pay taxes on this now? Mm-hmm. This is what he owed me. This is my money. Mm-hmm. But, you know, wow. on the flip side of that, not being able to claim that as income. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. Wow, because you even have to you have to even claim, um, what's that, um, uh, when you're out of work? Unemployment. 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 Yeah. You have to claim that as income. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you're telling me I have to claim my unemployment as income but i don't have to claim my alimony as income wow so the person okay. is getting a tax-free bill on the courtesy of the spouse till 2025 until <laughs> 2025 <laughs> wow so i'm sure that law will change oh I, yeah I, I oh yeah definitely oh, yeah. see that law I, I can oh, definitely yeah. see that one changing but until then mm-hmm. okay what else Okay, now let's kind of dive into a little bit of international tax. Okay. Yes. International tax is actually my favorite area of the law. Okay. okay. And the reason why we want you to do that is because we see clients, you guys, mm-hmm. come to us from other countries. And you say, oh, it doesn't matter how I'm building my wealth. It doesn't matter because I'm going back home. Rosa, please. Okay. So remember, the U.S., like I stated at the beginning of the show, mm-hmm. 
traditionally worldwide taxation model, all right? So you guys live in Tanz Tanzania, Australia, whatever, as a U.S. citizen, you still are obligated to file your income taxes and may be subjected to U.S. tax rates. How our expat friends and family get around that is if they're working, let's say, in Dubai, because that's like really big, live tax-free mm -hmm. in Dubai. You will live tax-free in Dubai. You still have to file what's known as a 1040NR. If you don't file it, you'll be subject to penalties. You have what's known as a foreign earned income exclusion. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay, and a lot of people, for some reason, like to collapse the foreign in earned income exclusion with foreign financial assets. Those two are completely polar opposite, okay? And they're completely actually polar opposites of the law. Foreign financial assets is actually bank secrecy extra. You mm -hmm. earning income in Dubai or UAE is internal revenue service, internal revenue code law. So these are completely, completely different areas. Yes. Different areas. You can run, but you cannot hide. No, and so, and it's really, really, really important wow. to understand that. So yes, you may live abroad, okay? And you may earn this money abroad and you will live tax free. You just need to file a 1040 NR. But when you own foreign financial assets, that triggers what's known as Bank Secrecy Act yes. and FATCA requirements. We have to we have to do, deal with that every year mm -hmm. as financial yep. professionals. So mm -hmm. what about the person that lives here mm -hmm. and Is they working. built wealth mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and then they are now going to go home and they think, well, I'm just going to carry my money with me right. or they can dip back in here and get, you know, they can, they can, you know, walk the line and not have to pay taxes. You are literally walking a minefield. Mm. Literally. Where, where, and um, what happens when you walk a minefield? You could step on something and, and blow, blow up. up. You're risking everything you ever built. Wow. So you, I think if I if I heard your hypothetical correctly, you are a U.S. citizen. Yes. You live here. You decide to retire abroad. Yes. Panama. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what the rule is, and then let me tell you what your obligations are, and then I'm going to tell you what happens, and they are extremely serious about this huh. if you fail to do it. This is mm. one of the most aggressive areas of the law and has been the most aggressive tax initiatives for um, Congress to get money for the past five years. Wow. And this administration is picking right up from the last administration. Mm -hmm. They are not playing around with people and their foreign financial assets. So essentially, the rule is, if you are a U.S. citizen or resident, U.S. tax resident, and I won't get into the definitions, um, you have a duty to report your foreign financial assets if the foreign financial asset either singly or in the aggregate, it's $10,000 or more. So let's give an example. I have a foreign life insurance policy because people don't consider that a foreign life, a foreign asset. Under US tax law, that's a foreign financial asset. Mm. That foreign life insurance policy is worth $50,000. And then I actually have an account in the UK that's a dollar. So I'm like, well, I don't have to report any of this because that's a life insurance policy and then this account only has a dollar and that's below the $10,000 threshold. Not true. Foreign life insurance policy is a foreign financial asset. You must, must get with a tax attorney to look at your foreign financial assets to see if they meet that definition because it is extremely broad. And it's broad because they want to be able to have far-reaching powers, the U.S. government, to grab your assets if you are a U.S. citizen. So you just can't go and say, well, I'm just going to retire. No, 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 honey, that requirement does not go away at all. Wow. When mm. you fail to report your foreign financial assets and file what's known as your FBAR, which is separate from your tax return. You are risking, for every account you have, you are risking 50% penalty per account per year. <coughs> Whoa. And this is the civil side. Wow. Whoa. This is That's the, the civil, civil side. The, you, and if they feel you willfully fail to report these assets, and, they, and the government has won some phenomenal cases that I just thought, oh no, that person wasn't willful. They have, the government has the upper hand in this in case law. They will criminally prosecute you and civilly prosecute you. And what happens is all that money, all that wealth you built, all because you were trying to say, oh, I'm not going to report because I had my, eat my hat, my same tax prepared for 50 years. No, 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 no. And that's a big deal because if you think of where we are here in the Houston, um, Texas area, there's a lot there's of expats. A lot of, a lot of them. Lots of. I see a lot of them, and, and, oh my they, and a lot of them always say to me, "Well, I plan to retire back home," and I'm like, "Listen, now, now, I'm going to say no. You, you, we're going to have you, you have sit to have a down conversation. with Rosa Weaver mm -hmm. because um, you're risking losing everything you have if you don't." 
have that conversation. So we, you know, again, this is not our lane and that's why we have her here. Mm. We want to make sure that you have the proper information so that you can, you can act accordingly and you can respond accordingly. And accordingly, this is the show is about to be done. It is. And let me just oh hit gosh. one more point. Sure. Sure. Actually two points. Go ahead. Go if ahead. I, may mm. I please? This, go, this, go, is, go, go. this is good stuff. <laughs> if you want to renounce your citizenship, you can do that. But remember, if your assets are valued over $2 million, you need to call me because you will pay a penalty for renouncing your citizenship. Because a lot of people are like, well, wow. I just don't want to be a U.S. citizen anymore. Okay, it's not that easy. They're not mm. going to just let you off the hook. You come over here, build all your wealth, and now you don't want to be a part of it anymore. Right, and, and, I, and I think with us changing to a territorial system, these rules and, and things will change. But will I see it changing as much? No, because the changes have been really for the business world, not for the individuals. We've said that. We've okay. said that. We've so said that's that. one thing. And then the last thing I really want to um, point out is to my preparers. So this really message is for all my preparers. Um, you, when you are filing taxes, you guys know you have circular 230 requirements. Um, you also, what I get, I have a lot of clients who are preparers who fail to do what's known as their due diligence requirements. And under the last administration, um, they were very aggressive at going after preparers who did not properly do your due diligence requirements. And what does that really mean? If you are a preparer and you fail to do your due diligence requirements, let's say you did 1,000 returns for the year, which is what average what preparers do. Wow. If you fail to properly fulfill those requirements, for every return you had, it's a $500 penalty. And wow. they've done 1,000. They did 1,000. Wow. This year, okay. it's going to be 520. So going up twenty dollars per penalty, five hundred twenty dollars per tax return. You did not properly do it for. So, for example, you know I, I have a client who owes seven hundred twenty thousand dollars because she failed to fail to fulfill this requirement. Attention, tax preparers. Yes. Wow. That's a but, big but 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 I think that's good because there's so many out there who who are not. I mean, they're they're they have a storefront. And they're, they're doing, there has to be some accountability for these so people. So that's why we have it. So if you look at what our budget is, 73% mm -hmm. of the fraud falls into this category. Wow. Um, and so preparers, and you have a duty to be what the IRS considers, the Department of Treasury considers, our first level of police. Absolutely. Exactly. And that's why they hold prepares accountable and they're and, doing the fraud and, and they're, they're doing, the doing it doing the because, fraud. because you know what you see you see an increased number of people you know coming out of the woods uh during this time of the year mm -hmm. it's tax season they mm -hmm. know the amount of money they, they can open make. up like this I mean, and open close. Close just yes. like that you can't even wow okay so that's that's, that's actually really good i appreciate good. that that was really good you guys this has been an incredible show unfortunately we are at the end but this will not be the end that you will see of rosa okay mm -hmm. we promise you that um, we're going to bring her back because there's so much more that Absolutely. I know that she can share with us. We really, really, really appreciate you being here today. Um, Thank you. Phenomenal information that you were able to share with us, a wealth of knowledge, uh, and we're going to provide her to you as a resource. So. Thank you so much. One more time, your contact information. One more time, real quick. Absolutely. 1-855-4847-TAX. Uh, Rosa Weaver Esquire on Instagram. Rosa Weaver Esquire on Twitter. And 4283 Legal Advisors on Facebook. Awesome. awesome. And you guys know how to reach us. We'll see you next time. Same time, same place here on uh, the, the Money Factor. <laughs> <laughs> she got all tongue-tied. We'll see you same place, same time next week. Bye-bye, you guys. Bye -bye. Thank you.